everyone. My name is Xanthia Johnson. I am the owner and CEO of Urban Playology. We are a boutique private practice in Washington, D.C., and we provide expressive arts and play therapy to families and children. I've been a counselor, licensed professional counselor for nearly 20 years now. I'm a little younger than I look. And I'm so excited to have the opportunity to connect with you today about identifying depression and uh, how to faithfully prioritize your mental health. Just want to make sure everybody can see me and hear me okay. Give a thumbs up. Loud and clear. Wonderful. So I will not be talking the whole time. I want to hear from you. I love hearing from young people and from the people who take care of them. It's not easy being a young person. Um, at any point in life. And so I just wanna congratulate you on continuing to move forward in your life. God has something amazing in store for you, I know it. So we'll get started with the presentation. You're gonna uh, be utilizing the chat often and um, let's get started here. Okay. So welcome today. We're gonna to be talking about identifying depression and how to faithfully prioritize your mental health. I wanted to start with a wonderful scripture from John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Let's take a moment of silence take some time to pray and make sure that whatever is supposed to reach your heart today will reach your heart. You can send positive energy to someone who you know is struggling in their faith. So as I mentioned, we provide expressive arts therapy at Urban Playology, and we use imagery, storytelling, dance, music, drama, poetry, movement, horticulture, dream work, and visual arts together in an integrated way to help foster human growth, development, and healing. Sometimes we find at Urban Playology, it's tough to talk about what's been going on in our lives, that we can always express ourselves in nonverbal ways. And that's what expressive arts allows us to do. So you know how we'll be spending our time together. I wanna give you an opportunity to share how you'd know that this, that our time together have been useful to you. We'll do an icebreaker and do some learning, identifying depression and the symptoms We'll have breakout rooms after our media viewing, interactive didactic learning, so more skill and application, and then we'll be moving into resources and then wrapping up final questions and evaluations. Just for housekeeping to make sure we have a wonderful webinar and presentation, please be sure to keep your mic muted at all times unless you are speaking. Sometimes we forget. Please also keep your comments brief so that as many people as possible will have the opportunity to share. Step up and step back. So if you tend to speak a lot, you may want to take a pause and see if any of your peers want to chime in and, and give their thoughts. And if you tend to um, to hold back a little bit, maybe you can share a little, a little bit about what, what your thoughts are so that we can hear you. One person will speak at a time. Uh, this has to be a safe place. And so we'll be using I statements to own our own experiences. And I'll do my best to respond to all of the statements and all of the questions uh, that will always be periodically reviewed during the webinar. So now I'm gonna invite you to take a poll. Okay. And in the chat, please select which number 
represents your comfort level. I'm trying to move this up a little bit. Okay. So one means that you're very comfortable. So one means you're very uncomfortable. Two means you're a bit uncomfortable. Three means that you are neutral. Four means that you are fairly uncomfortable. And five means that you are very comfortable. We have three questions. And so you can put your comfort level with each for each of these three questions in the chat now. So the first question is, what's your comfort level with discussing depression? The second question is, what's your comfort level with helping yourself or someone else with depression? And the third question is about what percentage of your week involves some form of self-care? I'm gonna open the chat so I can see it. Yeah. All right, the responses are coming through. Okay, so since you all can't see the responses, I'm going to summarize the responses that are coming in the chat right now. So we have some folks that say that they are fairly uncomfortable talking. They are, they are rating themselves at a two, a bit uncomfortable talking about depression. Uh, some, some are saying that in terms of their comfort level of helping themselves or someone else with depression, we are between a two and a three, a bit comfortable and to neutral. And then about what percentage of your week involves some form of self-care? Oh, everybody says they're able to see each other's responses coming through. Okay, great. Um, so in terms of the percentage of your week that involves some form of self-care, I've seen that some folks say that they have daily self-care, which is amazing. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do we have here? Angie does daily self-care, wonderful. Rochelle says about 10%, Kristen is 80 Catherine is 25, Julie is 25. Mahiri, I hope I'm saying that correctly, about 15%. Ronald, 25%. Susan, 10%. Andrea, 20%. Dory, 25%. Okay. So you all know what self-care is. Would somebody um, like to share what their definition of self-care is? Um, I, always be sure to introduce yourself. Give us your first name. Um, hi, my name is CJ Putney. Uh, I think that self-care means, you know, you're making sure that you're taking care of your own uh, mental awareness, your physical uh, being, you know, make sure that you're eating right, um, make sure that you're doing things so you kind of stimulate the brain. Very good, that's exactly right. Eating right, stimulating the brain, taking care of your mental health. Thank you for starting us out. Naya, you can unmute yourself. Let us know your your definition of self care. Naya N I Y A. I see your hand is raised. I'm gonna be on here because my device just died. Okay. Hi. So what I think self-care means the how much you care for yourself, like how you care for yourself. That's exactly right. It's about how you care for yourself. Thank you. We have Abby, 
And then we have Kristen and then Annie. So self-care is your personal hygiene. Um, and like both physically, physically your personal hygiene and also mentally, mentally taking care of yourself, making sure that you're not too stressed out and when you are taking little breaks so that you can relax more. Wonderful, absolutely. So making sure you brush your teeth and take care of your body and that's not just physical, it's also to your emotional, your emotional hygiene. Wonderful, thank you. Who's next? So we have Andrea, we have Kristen, and Annie. Andrea, do you want to go ahead? Hi, uh, my name's Andrea. I'm from Mount Zion United Methodist Church, uh, Magazine, all the way from Pasadena, Maryland. And um, to me, self-care is, again, about taking care of yourself, but finding that time to really, like, do even just your beauty regimens and facials and I try to get out to get a massage once a month, you know, things like that. <laughs> and I, I certainly think that I can do more because we can never, ever have too much self-care. Thank you so much for that reminder. You're absolutely right. Self-care is a deposit that we make into our, our emotional and spiritual bank accounts. Thank you. Okay, we have Annie and Kristen and then Shonda. Um, hi, actually, my name is Abby, but I, I, I don't know why it says that on my screen. It's just been there. And total health, um, health for me is like my mental health, my spiritual health, my physical health, overall wellness of, of like my relationships between the people I know and the relationship with me and my body. Yes, there is indeed a relationship. Thank you so much, Abby. There is a relationship between, you know, our mind and our body, and we have to pay attention to that. Thanks for the reminder on that one. Okay, Kristen. To me, self-care means that I'm taking care of, I'm doing the things that I enjoy. Absolutely. Sometimes we get really busy and we think, oh, I just don't have any time to, to do anything fun. I've got a lot of things that I've got to do. And sometimes we have to just stop for a minute and do things that we have always enjoyed doing. Those things can get away from us. Um, and last uh, for this round of responses, Shonda, do you want to share? Hi, I'm actually Sam. Um, Shonda's I'm on my mom's account. But okay. Um, mind, body, and soul, and we are from Pasadena, Maryland. Welcome, mind, body, and soul. So, thank you. So we will be talking about depression, which can sometimes be a downer, but we will try to make sure that we're offering a lot of, I'll make sure that we talk a lot about resources and ways and strategies to feel better. Okay. So before we move forward, please type into the chat what your most used emoji is. Your most used emoji. You can only pick one. <laughs> okay, with laughing face, the heart, LOL, the hand, smile, halo smile, skeleton, heart, crying, hugs, sparkling heart, crying, laughing, hand palm. Yes, emoticons definitely count, Abby. Mine is that pink flower laughing. So emojis actually can actually can help us the amen hands, the prayer hands, yes. Worried. Any hearts. Okay. 
So the emojis actually help us express ourselves when we're communicating via text message. And we'll get back to why and how that could be important when we're communicating with each other. Thank you all. Okay. So I included this cartoon here because it represents how many of us, um, how sometimes how we can feel sometimes. We can think that we're in warrior, W-A-R-R-I-O-U-I-O-R -R -I -I -O -O pose, when really we are in warrior, W-O-R-R-I-E-R. -R -E and I can tell you when I was your age, I will raise my hand, I was a warrior. Am I doing this right? Am I doing anything right? What's your life purpose? Am I happy? What do I want in life? Should I eat chips for dinner? Is everyone looking at me? These are the kinds of questions that young people often have. And sometimes because you're young, people would say, adults might say, well, you don't have anything to worry about. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. But sometimes young people indeed do have something to worry about. Being a teen is really tough. Um, it can be really tough especially during this pandemic and the social justice climate, it can be tough making and keeping friends in the virtual world. Uh, communication is very different. Uh, you know, sometimes um, it's important for us as adults to remember that young people haven't had their traditional first year of schooling or academics or sports, involvement in sports with the pandemic. And so with that being cut short, it can sometimes be tough for young people. Um, having peer support to explore your traditional and non-traditional career paths and having that face-to-face -face support is different than having it virtually. And remembering that adolescents can be hard especially when we think of factors like the pandemic and the current social justice climate. So I want to just acknowledge that being a young person, it's not always easy. There are things that are really wonderful about it, but there are things that can be hard. And so as we think about what the fact that adolescence can be hard, sometimes young people fall into a depression. We all get a little sad or, some, or down on ourselves sometimes, but we'll talk a little bit about what, what, what happens when that sadness transforms or evolves into depression. Depression, otherwise known as major depressive disorder, is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how we feel, the way we think, and the way that we act. So it's how we feel, how we think, and the way that we act. When we talk about depression, let's talk a little bit about what the, what the symptoms of depression are. So you'll take a look at this list that I have here. And then if there's anything that you don't see, go ahead and put it into the chat now. Okay. So sadness, frustration, feeling hopeless. Those are all forms of negative thinking, active or passive thoughts of hurting yourself. So it may be that you're planning, you know, that you know somebody that's planning to hurt themselves or who have thought about hurting themselves, um, lack of fulfillment, the things that we that we used to do are no longer fun for us, or difficulty concentrating, reading the same sentence four times, or trying to remember um, remember how to do this math problem and taking a long time to do that. 
fixation on past failures. Maybe you didn't score as well on an exam or a test as you thought, and you keep thinking about it and it won't go away in your mind. Loss of interest in your activities, your families and friends. So you're withdrawing a little bit more, maybe playing video games and spending more time by yourself, maybe isolating, having unhealthy peer relationships or friend groups, being around people who you're spending time with, but you know that they're probably not the healthiest company to be keeping. Apathy, not interested, not caring about anything. Insomnia, difficulty sleeping or sleeping way too much. You sleep so much, you miss your first class. Changes in your appetite. Maybe you're eating a lot or maybe you're not eating as much. So there are a range of, of symptoms and they're not limited to just this list, which is why you all are gonna type your responses into the chat. Some of the causes for the signs and symptoms that we just talked include hormonal changes as an adolescent, your brain is changing, the chemicals in your body are changing, um, stress, young people can get stressed out overcompensating, always being the jokester when you're feeling really sad on the inside, false pride or false confidence. So you're trying to pretend that you feel good and that you have high self-esteem, but you really don't. Um, learned patterns of negative thinking, maybe somebody in your family, maybe the grownups in your family sometimes have a difficult time being positive and you've learned how to think negatively the way that they have. Um, unresolved trauma, Trauma describes a scenario where, excuse me, where um, an, a painful event happened in your life and it was unscheduled and it was usually, it's usually very sudden. Your school performance, maybe you're not doing as well in school as you used to. And the social or environmental experience, maybe something has changed, maybe you had to move or your best friend moved. These are some of the things that can cause depression. So now I'm going to go back to the chat and just briefly take a look at your responses about some of the signs and symptoms. Very good, everyone. Very good. Anger. Yes. Anger, irritability, frustration, being grumpy, a lack of communication, insomnia. Great question, Abby. Uh, insomnia happens when you cannot sleep. You're standing, sitting there, laying in the bed, looking up at the ceiling, and you cannot go to sleep. And everyone else has gone to sleep around you. Uh, not sleeping as much, not being able to fall asleep. Self-confidence issues. Very good, Casey. Denise says loneliness. Yes. Wanda, feeling unwanted. Restlessness is, yes, is indeed one of the symptoms. Trust issues. Fear, open compensation. Boy, do I wish I knew that word six months ago. I hear you, Abby. Trouble concentrating, isolation, being nervous, anxiety, yes. No motivation, playing computer games to avoid reality. That's right. So I know that was a lot. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into what, you know, when you know that you, you or somebody that you love has been feeling like this, what do we need to do? So one of the things I wanted to share with you all that where depression is concerned, you want to, I want to invite you to take a real, take a look at your relationship with God. Okay. I'm going to encourage you to crack open your sacred text and access it regularly. When you, when it's time to go to Bible study, that may be a perfect time to kind of explore where faith was cultivated, the chapters where faith was cultivated, the chapters where doubt had been, has been has been transformed into faith, and to really focus on whatever content fosters humility, peace, and faith in your life, because faith without works is dead. That's why we pray. That's why we go to worship, so that we can build that muscle of belief. And even when we're struggling in our belief, we can choose to believe that there's a possibility that we are being held by a sacred God that cares about all of us. And as a young person, it can be hard to know, you know, where to go. And that's why you have the grownups in your life to help you. Um, 
for the grown-ups, I want to say that it's important for us to be trusted adults. Sometimes we start talking before the kids can get the, the next words out. Um, and we want to make sure that they have a safe space to be their real selves and to be heard. Uh, we need to acknowledge their hardships and to validate their feelings. The pandemic has really changed young people's lives. And we are not going to be the only influences in our child's life, but we can certainly be the best. Most young people, especially those that make their way to uh, work with us at Urban Playology, definitely want to communicate with their parents and caregivers. But sometimes they're worried about their caregivers as well and their mental health, or they just want to protect their caregivers. They don't want their parents and caregivers to worry about them, so they're not, they may not be as forthcoming. It's important for us to know that teens may be going through things, and those things might be testing their faith. And if those things are testing their faith, it's going to make it more challenging for them to lean into their faith. Uh, adolescence is really hard, as I mentioned before, especially when you think about the current social justice climate, the pandemic, and the ever-broadening landscape of technology. Most importantly, we have to put our own oxygen mask on before we offer it to them. Teenagers are very perceptive, and so they know when we're taking care of ourselves and when we're encouraging them to do the same. Oops. For young people, depression does not have to be the end for you. You can reach out to families and your family and friends for support and let them love you. If you tend to be a really loving person who is always there for people, it's about time that you let somebody sit back and help you. Sometimes it means seeking counseling with a psychotherapist like myself, someone who's, licensed, who's a licensed mental health professional, I've been in graduate school and done many, many years of work to be in order to be able to work with young people and their families. Medication may be um, a resource, uh, however temporary um, or however long-term, and that is, you, that is prescribed by a medical doctor like a pediatrician or a psychiatrist. Practicing mindfulness and spending time in nature, letting feeling the wind on your face or watching the birds fly can bring us back to the present. And focusing on our accomplishments. Sometimes we say, you know, I didn't do anything. I haven't done anything. That's the negative thinking because you've done a lot. If you blinked, you've done a lot, that's an accomplishment. And so we tend to focus on the really big things and we tend to gloss over the really small things that actually help lead us to the big, the big victories, the big triumphs. And it's important for us to practice authentic self-confidence. So we don't have to pretend to be someone else. We can be ourselves and, and share that person with the world. Oops. Sometimes without realizing it, we're practicing perfection, okay? So we need to set small measurable goals. So if you say, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna study for three minutes, you set your timer and you do that for three minutes, you study for three minutes and you congratulate yourself. Uh, you can also to have a partner that, that a goal partner where you all hold each other accountable and support each other uh, on your goals. Eating right. I know some things taste really good. I myself, I love chocolate and pasta. And as long as we're eating, we can have those things as long as we don't have them too much. That's going to help support our brain health and our brain chemistry, which is a big part of um, uh, treating depression. We want to engage in moderate exercise, and that can be really tough now that we're in a pandemic. But you can throw on your favorite song and have a dance party by yourself and get some exercise or go for a walk. Sunlight is also, too, one of the very important ways um, and natural way to treat depression. Uh, the sun has vitamin D, and vitamin D is one of the things that we need in order to help feel better when we are experiencing, you know, a sadness. And then if all else, you know, we can always help a loved one. 
sometimes we, you know, there's a, a friend or a family member that we're concerned, and we can acknowledge and validate their feelings and support them in doing some of the things that I just described. Okay. All of us should be keeping diverse voices around us um, uh, in person and also to be via social media. We have to create loving distance from people who are not supporting us and who are not positive influences in our lives. And we have to choose ourselves in those situations. Uh, that's part of emotional and spiritual health. We can, we can uh, start or join positive groups and we can be open again to supporting loved ones and helping them know when it's time to connect with a professional. Sometimes we can't see ourselves, but we can see ourselves through the eyes um, of someone who loves us. I know we're over time here, but I just want to share this with, uh, with you. Let's try not to take ourselves too seriously. They say we are supposed to have a daily laugh, a belly laugh every day so you should try to find something youtube is great finding something finding funny videos uh, feelings aren't fact so sometimes if you're having a negative thought most negative thoughts are like the waves of the ocean they come but then they pass and that's usually take it usually takes 10 to 20 minutes for a negative thought or feeling to pass so you want to set a timer if the feeling or thought is not gone at the end of that timer you turn you set the timer again and you keep repeating until it's gone and the thoughts and the feelings the negative ones they will usually go away when we share them in safe spaces with people that we trust so those negative thoughts and feelings are like um, they're like bandits or robbers. Once we turn the light on them and expose them for what they are, they tend to scurry away. Not always, but they tend to scurry away. Uh, one of the most important projects that I did with the Baltimore Washington Conference is created an abundant health ministry calendar. And on this calendar, every month is connected with a mental health awareness month. And in each of those, on each of those months, we have a list of ways that you can practice taking care of yourself as related to that mental health issue. So for example, if the issue was depression for that month, we might list all of the different ways that I just described, spending time in nature, talking with a loved one, um, getting exercise, eating right, getting enough sleep. We might talk about those ways as ways to minister as, as a way to minister to yourself and to your community um, around that issue. Other resources include there is a teenager therapy podcast and it's for and it's by teens. They talk a lot about working through mental health and they have an episode dedicated to overcoming mental health challenges. So I encourage you to check that out. It's free. I also too have a blog on my site that talks about breath. Oftentimes when we're experiencing depression and or anxiety, it's because we have stopped breathing. So when we give the body full breath, inhaling as we expand the belly like a balloon and sending the breath up through the throat and the chest and lungs, freeing that carbon dioxide, it actually helps support the brain and it helps support the body. Um, there are a couple of TED Talks too about being well-rounded and dealing with overcoming um, mental, mental health issues and mental wellness. Uh, so some of these might be available. I'll make sure that Sharonda has them to distribute them to, to all of you. At Urban Playology, we are now starting our first cycle <clears throat> of exposure, which is an expressive arts group. We meet on the first and third Monday evening of every month. And right now we're working with those who identify as girls and we finish that cycle, then we work with those who identify as boys or other, and we're working in that who, who may have other gender identities and we work to provide surefire tools to help you to navigate life in positive ways. 
We also are uh, providing parent coaching and caregiver coaching in that program. We have a February parenting support group. So if you know that your parent needs a little bit of support, you can send them our way. Your caregiver needs a little support. You can contact me on my email address, which will be at the end of the presentation if you need more information. Uh, we also are working with uh, my colleague and I, we have a compassionate anti-racism project where we teach people how to engage lovingly uh, regarding race, uh, class, and gender. I am Xanthia again with Urban Playology. We're on Instagram. We are here. We have openings for families. At this time during the pandemic, no one is turned away based on ability or inability, based on inability to pay. We offer teletherapy and teleexpressive arts as well. I want to thank you all so much for having us here. I wish I could spend more time. I hope I get to connect with you all again. Take care of yourselves. I was once a very worried teen and I had no idea that I would end up living a life beyond measure. I get to wake up every day and connect with people like yourselves who are healing from the pain of not fitting in. I'm gonna do that for as long as I can. I want you to join me if you, you know, when you make it to my age, I won't be able to do this forever. So I'll have to be able to pass the torch. I believe in you. If no one has told you today, you matter. Your life is gonna be amazing. And it's gonna be even more amazing with every moment that you give yourself a chance. Thanks so much for having me again.